Hello everybody and welcome to this SimScale webinar. It's great to see that there are a few familiar names in the attending in the participants list. So welcome back to all of you. Um, for those of you who are new here for, for, for a first time, um, I'm really excited to, to show you a little something about what we are doing here at SimScale. Um, now then, for today's webinar, we are going to be looking at uh, propeller and fan design. And this is going to be, um, it's going to act as an introduction to both rotating machinery and also turbo machinery. Okay, so let's crack on. Firstly, I'm going to introduce a little bit about myself and also to the man who's done the majority of the heavy lifting of this webinar, who's got through a lot of simulations to get the results for you guys. Okay, so, so my name's David, and uh, some of you might know me from, from other webinars, but I've basically been in the CFD and FEA industry for, for a number of years now, and also coming from an engineering university background. So on to Arno, the man of the webinar. Hi guys, uh, so I'm Arno. I'm also a, um, an application engineer here at SimScale. Um, I work in different areas of the industry where CFD and FEA are used extensively, uh, more specifically using rotating machinery and interval machinery. So um, once David has shown you um, uh, the setup, uh, I'll run through the, the platform interface and the simulation setup and results. I'll show you how you can run a new simulation using different parameters and the one I've used and see how easy it is to, uh, to use the platform. Awesome. And before we get started, please, if you do have questions, then um, there's an option in the GoToWebinar um, meeting that you can just type in your questions and we will um, and we'll answer them probably at the end once we've, we've gathered all the questions together. So a little bit about the agenda before we get started looking at the benefits of using firstly simulation and then specifically SimScale and then we're going to jump into a bit of propeller design using CFD and, and we're going to show you how you can use CFD to, to get results about your design which you could then use to make design decisions and optimize the uh, geometry that you're trying to use. So simulation in general as many of you will know is a way to speed up the design iterations of your design process without the need for unnecessary amount of physical prototy prototyping which can induce high time investment costs and also um, physical costs. So that's simulation in general. What we're doing here at SimScale is really accelerating that process by utilizing cloud-based simulation. simulation. So this means that we can utilize parallel um, computing and therefore we can run many different simulations at the same time and also use a, a huge number of cores to make sure that we're getting really quick runtime and we're getting the maximum amount of results down in the minimum amount of time. So the way we're doing that is um, really, well, the way we have, have phrased it is that we're breaking down the old barriers to entry to simulation, which would have been high investment costs up front for, for large scale computers and also having to have licenses on um, local machines. But what we have done here is, is everything's online, everything's web based and um, we can do all in one simulation. So we can do structural analysis, fluid dynamics and also thermodynamics all in one project in one um, browser and utilizing cloud computing. Okay. And what, on this slide, what we have is six of the, of, of the key points that really makes us um, attractive. And what me and Arno are part of is, is the real-time support. So the application engineers here, we're, we're available for you when you're using the, the SimScale platform. And there's a chat option in, in, the, um, in the workbench that you can reach out. If you've got any questions, need some help getting a set up, we're there to help. And, uh, and we really enjoy interacting with you guys, learning from you and uh, then bringing up the SimScale community all together as one. So that leads on to collaboration. And, um, and, and because we, we, it's all web-based and, and people can share their projects, then we um, have a large community where we can all learn from each other, which is um, it's, it's just amazing, especially if you're in the learning process of, of simulation, you can really make the most, the, the most of our public libraries. In terms of our... Other benefits, we've got fast and easy to use 
because it's all web-based and we've tried to make it so you don't need a degree, you don't need to be a simulation expert, but we're actually trying to make it a very easy flowing workflow for all of you. So today's topic, as we move into it, is going to be based on propeller and design, uh, propeller and fan design. Now this is quite a good starting point for going into different industries like rotating uh, machinery and also turbo machinery. And the, what, the reason I say this is, is the propellers and the blades themselves is the starting point of, of these different industries. So we wanted to start with propellers and fans today and uh, then move into some turbo machinery webinars later on in the series. The reason we're doing propellers and fans at the same time is really the physics is the same. But a fan is generally stationary and a propeller is, is causing motion to the body. Now for both of these, um, both propellers and fans, the name of the game is efficiency. So we want to be maximizing the useful power output. Now for a fan, this useful power output is the, um, the way that the fan actually accelerates the flow. That is a measure of, of the useful energy, the useful power of the device. Now for a, prope a propeller, the useful power is actually the thrust developed on the blades leading to um, inducing the motion of, for example, aeroplanes or boats. And yeah, so but essentially the physics is the same. So, so we've, we've put them both together in this one webinar. When we're using CFD or, or doing any design process for propellers and, and fans, there's a number of ways that we can optimize these to really maximize that output power from, uh, from the input power. Now, I forgot to mention that the input power for when we're talking about efficiency, we're comparing the useful output power with the, um, the input power that is imparted on the shaft. So from the engine, how much torque is imparted to the shaft, okay? But once we, once we have results, then there are a number of ways we can optimize our propellers or our blade design in general. So we can, we can have a look at the blades, but additionally, say if we're doing fans or, or propellers, we can add ducts and shroudings to really accelerate the flow and um, then maximize our, our power output. So getting a little bit deeper into the into the theory, the efficiency is for our case, because we're going to look at specifically a propeller today, we're looking at useful power output divided by the shaft, the shaft power input, and that's going to give us our efficiency. And as I said, that this useful power is actually going to be the thrust. And the way we, um, we create the, the power from the thrust is timesing it by the axial speed of the fluid. So the speed of the fluid passing along the axis of rotation of the propeller. Now the way we actually do this is jumping into thrust and torque and power coefficients. Okay, so this is the sort of standard industry practice that when you get your thrust results, you're going to non-dimensionalize them with the, um, with the diameter and the density, sorry, the diameter of the propeller and the density of the fluid and the um, rotational motion. So we calculate first our thrust coefficient, as you can see here, and we also calculate our torque coefficient. And then the way we um, bring in that axial speed of fluid is using what's called an advanced coefficient. And that is going to be the free stream velocity divided by the rotational speed times by the diameter of the propeller. Now, if, if, you, if you haven't gathered all of that or you haven't um, absorbed all of that straight away that doesn't matter what we need what's important is that you get your thrust results and your torque results so the t and the q from your cfd analysis and then we would put those two values into this equation and we're going to have our efficiency values for the propeller for the given operational conditions so the free stream velocity and the rotation of the propeller when it comes to actually making the design changes to optimize, there are a number of things you could do. So you could look at the number of blades that, are, that the, the propeller is made out of, the outer di diameter, which is obviously going to affect the, the tip speed and, and different parameters like this. And then you've got your pitch, which is going to affect the angle of attack of the blade as, and as it's attacking the fluid coming towards it. And then you've also got other considerations such as your leading edge blade angle and also the trailing edge blade angle. 
objectives for today. So we've got already some, some nice shiny pictures of our CFD results. But the objective today is to simulate the airflow passing over the blades whilst it's spinning at multiple RPMs and also to observe turbulences created by the, the rotating motion and also to quantify the performance indicators like we just mentioned about torque and thrust and also the free stream velocity. And once we have done all that, once we have the simulation set up, then we can apply some result controls to actually measure the, the forces imparted on the blades themselves. And that's where we're going to get our torque values and our thrust values. So first things first, when we're doing any simulation, the important thing to do is actually get your CAD model onto the platform, onto the workbench where you're going to be able to simulate. Now, for this propeller or for any rotating motion um, machinery, we need to bring in both the propeller design and also what we call a rotating region. Now, that's much better to bring in as part of the CAD model. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, after we've done the CAD import, then there's obviously the simulation setup. We run the simulation and then we can visualize the results and make our design decisions corresponding to those results. So this is what I was just mentioning. When you bring in your, your propeller, you need to also bring in the region that's actually going to ro rotate with the propeller. And so the way we do rotating motion here at SimScale is using the MRF technique. So that's a modified rest reference frame. So it actually means that the fluid is going to be spinning around the propeller rather than the propeller physically spinning. And this is a fair approximation and, and this is the, the best way to get steady state results for a um, rotating machinery simulation. So what's important is to bring in both your propeller geometry and also the rotating zone. Now in terms of the dimensions of the rotating region, we need to make sure that it has a width of about 0.4 times the diameter of the propeller and it should be maybe 0.1 of the diameter larger in the in the radial direction so moving on to our simulation setup the first thing we need to do is to create the air domain so this is the numerical wind tunnel where we're going to be testing our propeller and we do this using a background mesh box with the dimensions that I that I've put on the slide here so with eight times the diameter of the propeller in the height, eight times in the width, and then we extend a little bit further in the downstream direction, just so we know we're going to um, resolve the, the, well, we know that the flow is actually going to be much more complex in the wake region, and it makes sense, therefore, to give a little bit more domain in the downstream direction so that we know we're going to capture the physics accurately. A little bit of specifics about the mesh we're using. So it's a hex dominant mesh with particular refinements. So we've applied um, some finer mesh onto the blades and into the wake region. And we've also made sure that we're having boundary layer mesh so that we then capture the boundary layer effects um, affecting the, the propeller itself. Now the mesh we're using roughly 6.4 million cells. And the great thing is that we can we can create that mesh on multiple processors so it runs nice and quickly and we can also simulate the simulation on multiple processors using the cloud solving to then really optimize the runtime. Specifics on the boundary conditions that we're going to use and a few things about the solver settings. So we're running steady state simulations as we, if you wanted full detailed transient results you're going into very very extensive CFD and if we're just comparing between different designs, it makes much more sense to just look at the steady state results. And actually, the, the flow coming out of um, propellers from the MRF zone, it actually does represent really well the, um, the, the physical reality. If we had something, uh, a blockage downstream of the, of, of the propeller, then we might need to consider using, using a transient um, approach. But if we're just doing straight... Um, propeller design comparisons. Let's keep it to steady state. Let's keep it simple and then we can maximize the number of iterations that we're going to be able to get through. For our turbulence model, I'm sure most of you know about turbulence models, but uh, we're going to be using for this case the K-Omega SST turbulence model and this is pretty good for external aerodynamic 
uh, applications when we're sticking to the RANS method. In terms of the other boundary conditions that we have, we're going to keep it simple with the velocity inlet and we're going to add the free stream velocity to this inlet and then that is what we're going to then use to, to calculate our advanced coefficient that we discussed a little earlier. On the outlet of the, of the numerical wind tunnel of the external domain, we have a pressure outlet and this pressure outlet is going to be defined as zero pressure, which actually is zero gauge pressure, which is going to be atmospheric pressure. So that means there's going to be no restriction to the flow and the air can just leave the domain as though nothing was there. Now, for the top surface and the side surfaces and the bottom surface, we're going to be applying frictionless walls. So then again, it's as though our wind tunnel is actually a small section of a larger external domain. So then we know that the domain itself won't be affecting the results close to the propeller. On the propeller surfaces themselves, we actually do need to model the friction. We need to get the boundary layer effects accurately. So here we're going to use non-slip walls. And um, this is our default boundary condition. So actually, you don't really need to, to set this up at all. It's going to be done as default for you. Now, where we actually apply the rotation of the propeller is using the MRF rotating zone and applying a particular speed to it. So for the first simulation that we're going to go through, it is a 6,000 RPM um, scenario. So, so those are the operating conditions. And then what Arno has done is created many, many, many simulations with different RPMs and with different free stream um, velocity. So we've got a number of different advanced coefficients that we're, we're going to test this particular propeller on. And then you can really get insight into how this thing is going to perform in reality. So, so having said that, it's already time to get into the live demonstration. So I'm going to quickly run you through the, the initial setup. So, so what I've just discussed, I'm going to show you how you do that on, on the workbench itself. And then I'm going to hand over to Arno, who's going to go through, go through with you the, um, how you would go about making a larger study where you're going to look at multiple different operating conditions. So here we are in the propeller study. Now, for those of you who are new to the workbench, what we have here is a, a top-down approach where we firstly import our geometry. So on this little plus here, we can import the geometry. Now, we can either come in from our direct link with Onshape. So if you're an Onshape user, then, then it's super simple. You just one click and you'll find your Onshape library and then you can import any of your, your solid body models into the workbench. And also, if you do have um, other types of CAD file format, for example, .sat, parasolid, .step, anything like that, we're going to be able to get into the platform absolutely no problem. Okay, so you upload that here, and then from your geometry, you're going to create your simulation. So using these three, um, the three dash button on the, on the right here, we're going to create our simulation. Now, here's our extensive list of the different simulations that we can do here at SimScale. So starting from our finite element analysis, moving into the thermal analysis, and then coupling FEA with CFD, and then into our purely CFD. So we've got incompressible, we've got compressible, and some, some other new solvers, which are really exciting, but sadly not for this webinar. And yeah, these, these, are, the, these are the fundamentals of, of what we do here. And the great thing is you can, you, can you, you can do one of all of these simulations on the same geometry in the same project and send them all, them all off to the cloud at the same time, getting results back. Now, first thing that we need to do, once we have our geometry in, we've created our incompressible CFD simulation, we need to create a mesh. So the way we, we do this is just sticking to automatic settings. So we're going to use the automatic meshing algorithm, but we're going to apply some specific controls where we know we need um, specific refinement. So as I said earlier, we need refinement in the wake area of, of the propeller. So here I've created a geometry primitive, which is defining the, the wake and the um, surrounding area of, of the propeller and the rotating zone. So as you can see here, here's the, here's the rotating zone. And if I hide that, we can then go in and see our propeller itself. So if we hide the... So here is our propeller. It is there. 
and let's this is our rotating zone and then back onto our refinement areas so here's our large wake and then I've decided to do another smaller refinement region internally so then we're having a nice smooth transition from coarse mesh to fine mesh and then finally to very fine mesh on the propeller blades itself so that's all um, controlled using these mesh refinements here after creating geometry primitives where you want to apply those mesh refinements so to the actual external domain I've applied this particular refinement and then as we step down through the different regions we can see that it's getting progressively finer and then once we get into the the rotating zone itself it is getting pretty fine and onto the propeller surfaces and then the propeller features as well so it's always incrementally reducing the or increasing the fineness now if we actually have a look at the mesh at the finished mesh we can see that we've got pretty nicely um, refined rotating region if we hide our rotating region then we can see that the mesh on the propeller itself is getting pretty fine now then enough about meshes let's get into the exciting bit let's have a look at the how we actually apply the physics to this um, to this simulation so that's done using the boundary conditions that I went through earlier so if we just show the whole mesh we can see that we've now applied the boundary conditions to the mesh so we've put slip walls on the side and the top and the bottom and then we've applied the velocity inlet and we've applied a pressure outlet now for this case we're doing a free stream velocity of four meters per second with a rpm on the propeller of 6000 rpm and now that is going to give us an advanced coefficient of 0.19 okay and Finally, oh not finally, there's a couple more steps. It's, it's, not, it's not that quick. So we need to get our materials assigned. So firstly, let's put air on both of the both the rotating region and the, the full mesh. Okay? So those are gonna be um, the the full air domain of the simulation. Simulation control, here's where we can utilize the benefits of SimScale. We can use a multiple number of processors to run this one job. Okay? And apart from that, I've used all default settings. Lastly, and most importantly, before I forget, we've got to actually say, we've got to induce the rotation of the propeller. So if we just hide a few of these surfaces again, and we hide our rotating zone we are going to expect our propeller to be rotating in the positive y axis so the y axis is going around here and it's going to be rotating in the positive y direction so that's using the right hand rule and then we simply apply our 600 or 6000 rpm in rads per second and then you are good to go so the simulation is ready but what we want to do is make sure we have result controls in place so that we can then have um, we can read out the thrust values and the torque values on the propeller blade so what I've done is applied a forces and moments result control to all of the propeller surfaces okay and the right interval is then saying we don't want to we don't want to calculate it at every time step or every iteration excuse me uh, we want to calculate it only every 15 because then we're going to save ourselves a little bit of computational effort and then what we can do is we can simply click on the plus button next to simulation runs and our simulation is away and it's ready to go so this one took 106 minutes for um, a thousand iterations and with a mesh size of 6.4 that of 6.4 million for a thousand iterations that gives you an impression of um, what we can do with the 32 processors. We probably could have run this on more processors to, to increase the, the runtime. Um, in terms of the convergence of the simulation itself, so we have everything under 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 here. Uh, under our resume, you get the propagated convergence plot 
also the plots of the of the forces and moments from our result control and then also any post-processing screenshots that we make later on. Um, so we can see that it converged nicely and our forces and moments have come back um, as expected. So we've got thrust in the in the y direction of about three newtons and then the torque is is much much smaller of about 0.04 um, newton meters okay so just quickly when you when you do want to post process you can you can hit this button and and it'll take you into the online post processor and what you can do from there is create some screenshots so once you've got some nice screenshots that you want to show to your boss or whoever if maybe it's part of your your university study then we can um, take screenshots for example this is the velocity coming out behind the the propeller adding some adding some vectors and then also looking at both the the pressure on the blades and also the velocity in in the the, the plane of rotation there okay so we can we can load the the post processor just so you get a, an impression of of what we can do here and whilst that is loading, I'd love to show you where we, where you can contact me and Arnold. So our team is just down here in this little button, and we are we are ready. We're we're there for to help you out whenever you've got issues with your simulation, or you just want to talk about what's the best practice for a certain simulation. So you just click on new simulation or new <laughs> conversation, and then say hello. If you've got if you've got a favourite, then obviously you can ask for Aji. Then you can you can ask for anyone, Jesus. Um, but yeah, so you can ask for anyone that you know on the team or just, just, just put something out there and one of us will get back to you. So what we have is under result controls, these are, these are different scalars that we can visualize. For example, velocity, pressure, um, wall shear stress, et cetera, et cetera. And we can do cutting planes. We can look at uh, particle traces as well. So if we did some some particle traces from the from the inlet that might be quite exciting to have a look at so if we go for particle traces on the inlet let's pick a point here and then we can see our particle traces um, propagating through the domain if I now make sure I've got velocity mapped to the particle traces then we get a good impression of what's actually happening what is coming out of this um, of this propeller? Okay, so that is that's the essentials. That's that's what you need to do for your first your initial um, setup, so that you then have a uh, a first run that you can have a look at the the results, and then you can say, actually, no, I want to have a look at a different um, operating condition, or maybe you want to try a different design. And this is what Arnold's going to run you through now. So over to you, Arnold. All right. So um, basically, in uh, in this kind of study, uh, as David mentioned, we want to build up a curve uh, made of different uh, uh, input parameters because we want to evaluate at which point of the curve, at which point in terms of free stream or in terms of um, rotational speed, we will be achieving best efficiency because we are actually the idea behind this is to um, make our design more efficient and produce uh, more energy efficient um, prototypes. Um, in all case, um, what I'm going to run through, um, how to easily change these parameters and run uh, multiple simulations at the same time. And this is uh, where SimScales comes handy and allowing you to uh, on the fly, change change one parameters, run it, change another parameters, and run it. So basically, uh, we are uh, in a very similar case uh, project, um, having similar conditions and similar boundary conditions, similar materials. And what I've been doing so far is just creating all these runs here, uh, simply by uh, what we're going to do here is change this advanced coefficient. Uh, that that you've seen uh, in the slides, uh, it, it, and it's going to dictate uh, how much torque we're going to obtain and how much um, thrust uh, our propeller is going to, is doing, going to be able to produce. Uh, to change uh, one of these parameters, it's very simple. You go to your boundary condition, 
and you will change, for example, uh, your free string velocity. This will uh, then uh, you can you can change it to uh, I don't know what value, 6.5, for example, like this. At the same time, you can change as David showed you before the in the MRF rotating zone concept. You can change your uh, rotating rotational velocity here. So we've changed two factors here, and then click. Run. Run 54. You have yeah. been working hard, on it. Yeah. So it's basically the idea of yeah building up a curve with a with a lot of uh, points and trying to see uh, what we get from it. Uh, so that's 54. Number 54. I can. You see, oh, it's going to start a new run at the very bottom here, um, and you would you would see uh, all these runs finishing uh, nicely in in an hour or so. Um, uh, what I wanted to show you as well is um, because the objective of building up this curve is uh, to assess if an efficiency uh, for each of these points in terms of free stream and, uh, and rotational speed. So how we're going to uh, see our force and moments is through uh, what David mentioned before and showed you the, um, the torque and the thrust being applied on the on the faces of, of our propeller. So if you click on force plot, this is how the uh, these values are being monitored throughout the, the iterations, as we saw before. So you've seen that uh, it's it has it has converged uh, up to a point of 500 or 500 or 600 iterations, and this is our uh, the, the highest uh, curve. Here will show you an idea of how much force or thrust in this in this uh, case uh, that the, um, the propeller sees. So we have, for example, a value of 3.4, 3.5 Newton in that case. To assess uh, the, uh, the, for, the, the moment uh, on the blades, it's a, it's a smaller value, obviously. Uh, we can actually uh, see that from, um, from I, mean, I actually zoomed in by just dragging uh, uh, or window like this. Uh, we can isolate this here and we see that the pressure moment um, is going to be of this value here. And this is this is, it is with these two values uh, that we're going to uh, uh, build up our uh, thrust coefficient mm -hmm. and our uh, torque coefficient. And this will allow us to uh, get, get an idea of uh, uh, the overall efficiency of our system. The pressure that we apply to the to the to the propeller, uh, sorry, the the power we apply to the propeller to the to the power that's being issued to the uh, to the fluid. Uh, so basically, that is it. So you see that for each of the runs, I've carefully labeled uh, how much free stream we have, how much uh, rotational velocity, and a good uh, practice is just to change uh, one parameter at a time, and also and assess uh, what the the results are. You see that for uh, six meters per second. Uh, and one here for four meters per second. All right, we can reset the zoom and reset these values here. Um, what, let's have a look uh, now at the more um, in-depth results together. Okay. Okay, so this is what you saw uh, uh, on the on the live platform uh, where you can assess uh, a value for for the thrust mm -hmm. and and for the torque. So let's just make completely clear that the the useful power that is coming out of this propeller is is a measure of of the thrust that it's producing, and the input power to this propeller is measured by the torque imparted by the fluid on the propeller, which is then equivalent to the torque produced to rotate the propeller. That's it. That was explaining it to myself yes. as well. <laughs> All right, so this is what I was talking to you about uh, in terms of building up a curve. So you, you, you see that we have uh, for a specific free stream, so there's only one parameters, only one parameter that we're changing. In that case, it's going to be the rotational speed. So with a fixed uh, inlet velocity or free stream velocity of four meters per second, uh, I've applied four different or five different uh, rotational speed and measure the efficiency at each of these points. And this is quite nice to see, uh, uh, to evaluate at which uh, specific rotational speed at, for this specific uh, propeller where the highest efficiency is going to be. 
uh, on the right hand side is, is a quite uh, nice animation of what we could we could do with the platform and what uh, what kind of visual you, you can you can get from it. Um, and what's, what's interesting about this is we see that the, the efficiency basically goes to zero at eight thousand RPM. So if you're if you're spinning your propeller too quickly for the for the street free stream velocity that it is a part of, you're really getting no useful power out of your propeller. So it's really important to know which RPMs you need to be flying at, you know? All right. Uh, I think we have another uh, similar uh, curve, but for a different uh, free stream velocity. So you see that it has changed quite a bit from uh, from one free stream to another. So that's why it's important to uh, vary the, these, uh, this input velocity and how much and see assess how much uh, impact it has on the on the efficiency of our specific uh, propeller. Uh, another nice uh, visual here, where you see a cut plane through uh, through the axis of the of the propeller, showing a vector of velocity and uh, along with the with the color showing also velocity. Um, yeah, again uh, five points on our curve and uh, trying to approximate uh, a specific uh, uh, curve and maximum efficiency achieved for a certain stational speed. All right. Okay, cool. So, so this was basically the, a very, very simplified um, example of, of how you're going to go about initially um, simulating your propeller. And obviously you could do, you could go into very specific detail or to, to find very accurate results for a particular given flow condition or something like this. But if we're just comparing between different designs, it makes much more sense to do a propeller study that, that Arnor has done and you really get a large body of information coming back at you. So then you can make some initial design decisions quickly and then um, hopefully really reduce any, any losses that you've had in terms of time investment, money investment in in developing a physical prototype or going down um, experimental testing before you have a rough idea of where your propeller is going to um, effectively operate. Um, at this point then, let's, let's ask for some questions. Do, does anyone have any questions out there? Yeah, well, we're very excited to see uh, uh, your, your, your comments or any questions you can have. Uh, so uh, someone, someone here is asking about the, how this will then relate to, to turbo machinery and um, what it is. So, so we're basically going to be following a very similar simulation strategy to what we've done here with, with propellers or, or fan design. But then you're actually going to have the, the volute included in your simulation as well. So then obviously we're going to still spin our impeller in the case of a pump using an MRF zone. But instead of looking at the thrust or the acceleration of the fluid, to give us an example of uh, efficiency, we're then going to be looking at the, the pressure head developed by a, by a pump, for example. So how much head can a pump uh, actually pump? You know? And so this is where we want to go with some of our next webinars, where we actually have a look at some turbo, turbo machinery. And um, so, yeah, so stay tuned for the, for, for the turbo machinery webinars coming up. And anything else out there? So we've got a, a another question about the shroud gap. Is it possible to include the shroud gap? So it would be very much uh, possible to include a shroud um, in the in the geometry. So you'd you'd bring in your, your your shrouding for your propeller actually as as a geometry as well. So so during the the upload stage, make sure that your CAD model has both the shrouding and the propeller. And then as long as we have a good enough mesh between over the gap between the outer diameter of the propeller and the shrouding itself, we're going to be able to accurately simulate the effect of that shrouding. And that shrouding could be um, a way to accelerate the flow further so then we get some efficiency gains at particular uh, operating conditions. Or it could just be for protection or it, it basically it's, it's up to you. You can you can bring whatever geometry you want to bring in and, and test it and see how it's going to operate. Now, how to model a moving mesh is the next question. So this is what I mentioned earlier is the thing that we wouldn't recommend doing for, for quick analysis studies like we've done here. So when we're doing moving mesh, you need to run it transiently. And um, so, so when, you, when you do a moving mesh, it's going to have to be run transiently 
which we can do on the platform, but it just means that the simulation is going to take a much longer time. And all you would then do is using the AMI rotating region rather than the MRF rotating region. But you've got to make sure that your, your time step is then small enough to capture the physical motion of the blades. So, for example, we could, we could make sure that the time step is equivalent to one degree of rotation of the propeller. So that gives you an impression of how long a simulation is actually going to take to be able to then develop the flow after running it. Uh, for If one time step is one degree, you're going to have to run it for many, many time steps, which means that your simulation is going to be long. I mean, this is completely possible. And if you want some really accurate results or if you're interested in, in transient phenomena, then, then, then go for it by all means. And we'd love to hear from you. Put it on the community if, if you don't mind sharing your project. And then we can all uh, learn together and, and have a look. And, and also, if you do have any issues getting this set up, then, as I said earlier, just hop on the chat and we'll be there to help. There's also one thing uh, that's, that's worth mentioning here is uh, we have a question about uh, the pressure uh, distribution on the blade. This is also a very, uh, a very nice uh, tool that uh, CMD offers us is to uh, visually and in, in quantifying uh, the pressure that's being applied uh, by, the, by the fluid on the blade. So we can uh, also assess the rigidity of the, of the blade and see how much they, they can be affected uh, mechanically by, the, by the, the, the flow. So yeah, that's something completely uh, doable and it's, it's quite a nice uh, attribute to CFD in that case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, I think maybe this might have to be the final one, but what, so leading on from, from the last question about uh, transient simulations, the reason for, in many cases where you might want to look at transient simulations, so someone's asked a question here, when is a transient simulation necessary in turbo machinery instead of steady state? Now, if you're just interested in the pressure drop created or the pressure head developed by your, your turbo machinery, then I would say that the transient effects are not particularly going to affect that. So I think steady state is absolutely fine. But if you do have some sort of obstacles uh, directly downstream that's then going to induce vortex shedding or a transient phenomena like this, then you might need to have a look at... Um, you might need to have a have a look at the transient analysis, but um, as a as a first step, I would always stick to steady state. And then, if the results you're getting back are not making sense to you, or they're not going into the detail that you wanted to see, then of course have a go with the transient simulation. Okay, one one really final, really quick one. So, could this method be used for much bigger props, a thousand, a hundred inches? Yeah, absolutely. And um, there, there's really we don't have. We don't have uh, any, any restrictions on the models that we're going to be able to use. you just got to be careful with, with larger diameter blades. You might have a very high tip speed. And now if this tip speed is going above, say, 30% um, of the speed of sound, so Mach 0.3, then we might need to start considering uh, adding some compressibility to the simulation. So that means that then we're going to actually... Um, so, so when, when uh, flows go above not, Mach 0 0.3, the compressible effects will uh, influence the, the, the flow. So we need to use a different solver that actually solves compressible CFD, the compressible Navier-Stokes equations. But um, yeah, so just make sure that you're careful when selecting your, your prop diameter, that then you're going to apply the correct simulation or analysis type to that um, to to that run. All right. Yeah. All right. Very interesting questions, actually. Yes. Very good questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Guys, yes. Thank this. you very very much. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and right. we hope to see you on the SimScale community, reaching out to us if you've got any issues. But by all means, please do have a go yourself. So what we'll do is we'll share the a link to this this project. It's publicly available. You can have a go yourselves, and uh, maybe throw in your own. Uh, propeller geometry and test it out for yourselves um, so that's that's goodbye for me thank you very much for, for watching yeah thank you very much and stay tuned for the uh, for the next webinar uh, as the daily mentioned, is going to be uh, to machinery and others are coming up as well so thank you very much guys and I'll see you in the next one brilliant thanks guys bye bye, thank you. bye, -bye.